What up? This is Rama Screen, and in the anticipation of Among the Beasts arriving in theaters and on demand uh, February 10, I'm here talking with the star of this new film, Tori Kittles. How are you, Tori? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Congratulations on the film. I'm a big fan of the Equalizer series, by the way. <laughs> can't, wait, can't wait for the show to come back. And I'm also now a big fan of Among the Beasts. I watched it recently. It was a very badass movie. Uh, I love stories about vigilantes, especially with a complicated character like, like LT. What was your initial reaction when you first read Matthew Newton's script? What were your conversations with Matthew were like uh, that you that made you want to be a part of this project? I think, you know, I've always gravitated towards flawed characters, you know, like um, flawed heroes. You know, I think everybody is a hero in their own right. I think um, we all carry personal baggage. And what really struck a chord in me was that, you know, he was a guy who'd made a few mistakes. He was carrying his own uh, baggage, you know, the character of LT, which is a guy I play. He's a former Marine dealing with PTSD. And he, he teams up with an unlikely partner, a gangster's daughter, to go after a kidnapped child, you know? Um, another thing that that really stuck out to me was we were exploring this world of what would you do when, if someone took your loved one? You know, how far would you go? What lines would you cross to get them back? And what would you do to the people who took them, you know, if you ever found them? You know, these were all, themes and, and, and questions that, you know, were really interesting to me. And I'd seen Matthew's uh, prior movie, uh, Who We Are Now, uh, with the great Julianne Nicholson. And, and, and I just fell in love with all of the performances in that movie. And his writing on Among the Beasts made me want to be a part of it. You know, his writing and then his style, the way he, he worked with actors. So uh, that was something that, that I, I wanted. He reached out to me after seeing uh, a film uh, I did and, and wanted me to come aboard. And, and then he was so collaborative with every step of the process, you know, just from talking about the script, um, from bringing on all of the actors, the amazing actors that we got to bring on, Lee Baber Rares, Ronis Jackson, Norton, Jeremy Holm, you know, we had this, this great cast, Kate Easton, um, and everybody really poured their hearts and souls into this independent spirited film. You know, we wanted to make an action thriller that spoke to the audience and that's what that's really what we set out to do and uh, we didn't have a lot of resources but we had a lot of we had a lot of heart that we poured into it and, and you know I'm, I'm so happy that uh that you're responding the way you're responding to the film it really means a lot so thank you i don't know if you agree with me on this but to me lt is what would happen if dante marcus dante had lost uh, faith in the justice system uh you know but on top of that lt also like you said has baggage has personal demons. Um, well, how challenging was it for you to embody this character? Uh, what was your process? Because he's not just, LT is not just some kind of Charles Bronson guy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I, th I think he's a bit more sensitive than that, but I think he's also a badass in the sense that he has the skills to Charlie Bronson you if you get out of line. Um, but I think his approach is a little bit more intellectual in a sense that um, he, he's found new life, you know, new reasons for existence um, with this child that he's taken care of. And, it, and, it, and it's only when she's taken away that things begin to fall apart for him, you know? And, it's, and, and that's when he goes down this very dark road and he has to get it together. He has to pull it together, you know, to go after this girl because that's the only way she's gonna survive. And he does it, he doesn't do it alone. And I think that's one of the themes too that, you know, you take away from the film is that you could be a hero, but even heroes need help too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you need people to get through these journeys, you know, and he finds that in the unlikely companionship of, of, of Lola, you know, a criminal's daughter, uh, um, yeah. you know. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I apologize. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, a lot of things that we, you know, one of the, one of the other great gifts that we got for this movie was that uh, some real combat veterans opened up their world to us. Mm -hmm. They brought us in, they shared their stories, and we were able to include, you know, some of those stories in the film. It was such a, it was such a generous thing for them to do, and, and we were all so grateful because it, it really added a layer of authenticity, you know, to the movie, you know, and it grounded my performance in a way um, that I wasn't expecting, you know. It reminded me of the cost that all soldiers um, have have to, to give, you know, the lives that, 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 that they sacrifice, you know, 
just their own lives, the lives of their families, you know, like all of these things go into them being heroes and them sacrificing for the greater good. Um, is one of the themes that I, I love when characters do that, you know, when they, they put themselves on the line, you know, for, for other people, that's what heroes really are. Yes. Uh, I love the fight scenes in this uh, movie, especially the bar fight. Um, it's, it's very kind of Liam Neeson like when it's just about the, trying to quickly dismantle as if, uh, as opposed to long sequence. Um, mm -hmm. but well, talk to me about that. Was it MMA style? How rigorous was the training for those sequences? How long did it take to shoot them? Yeah, you know, we the, we actually, I got, the, Matt introduced me to Jeff Amato. I don't know if you know who Jeff is, but Jeff is is, is a legend in, in stunt circles. You know, he worked on films like Born Supremacy. And Jeff worked with me a few months. We got together for a few months working on different fight styles. We trained at Don in the Santo studio. Don in Santo was Bruce Lee's best friend. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so we did a lot of fluid work and, 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 um, and, and we just kept everything really loose because the juxtaposition of where, LT was in his fighting was that he had this rockiness, right? He was this, this, this roller coaster emotional life that was going on, but his fighting style was very, very fluid and very free. And, 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 um, and Jeff really worked with me and centered me in, in that fighting. And then he did the choreography for choreography for, uh, for all of the scenes. And, and, and they turned out, you know, it turned out really well. So I was very proud of that. I've interviewed Lee Bay before on a separate project. She's a fantastic actress. And uh, clearly from her performance in this movie, she can go toe-to-toe to -to -toe with LT. Talk to me about working with uh, Lee Bay on creating that, that, that dynamic between your characters. Lee Bay is such a, a generous, uh, very thoughtful actor. Um, and everything that we did, if I'm good in a scene, it's because, it's because of her. You know, like she was a great partner. Um, to be in scenes with. Um, she understood what we were trying to accomplish and she gave over to the process, um, which wasn't always easy because we had obstacles as an independent film. Um, we had to get in and out of locations sometimes, you know, very quickly. Um, but the performances never, never suffered because of that, you know, because everybody came prepared. She was so prepared. And, um, and I'm a big, I'm a big fan of hers, you know, and, and, and hopefully, Hopefully we get to, to further this relationship, you know, those characters of LT and Lola and, and, and um, you know, continue that journey. Now, I, this following question might be a bit spoilery, but it, it, it's bugging me and it, and it kills me if I don't ask you this question. Was it always the intention for the film to have some sort of an inconclusive ending as if to suggest that there might be a follow up after? I mean, was that always the plan? Did I miss anything? How did you feel about that ending? I actually, I love the ending. Hmm. Um, and, and, you know, I, I don't think it's as open and open ended as you as you think. I think that there's a possibility that we will continue this story. I think depending yes. on how people, you know, come out and support the film February 10th and theaters and on SVOD, you know, if we can get enough streamers they they're all already there have been some interest in us continuing this story. Matt has a great pitch about how we would continue this story. Um, that's really exciting. And so I, I think uh, we'll get to continue this journey, you know, and, and extend the franchise. Awesome. Awesome. And finally, Tori, uh, this final question is from, from me, myself, big fan of the Equalizer series. I believe it's coming back next week, the Sunday after Super Bowl Sunday. What mm -hmm. can you tease us about these new upcoming episodes? Is there a growing romantic feelings between Marcus and Robin? How intense is the, is the season three finale? What are you What are you allowed to tell us, the fans? <laughs> I'm allowed to tell you that we're taking a few steps to get a little bit closer. I can't tell you what the details of that are, um, okay. but we have some amazing stories to tell. We're back on February 19th, as you said, and and you know we've been on a little bit of a break. But while we've been on this break, we really been cooking up some stuff in the kitchen for the audience and, and we really appreciate the fan support that we get and, and we see it and we feel it all and um the fact that audiences are responding to the show that the way that they're responding to the show is so exciting uh, for us to be able to play these characters and and you know we're just in the beginning stages of where we're going to go with this story so the equalizer will be back Queen Latifah will be equalizing. Dante will be back, and Aunt Vi and, and D and Mel and Harry with those sweaters. Everybody's <laughs> coming back, and everybody's excited to be telling these stories. All right, for my fans at home, everybody go check out Among the Beasts arriving in theaters and on demand February 10. Tori, thank you for talking to me, and congratulations. Hey, thank you very much. I'm so glad you love the film. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much.